You're listening to the Membership Geeks Podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business. Well, hello there. This is a very, very special episode of the Membership Geeks Podcast. This is the 400th episode. How in the world have I managed to produce 400 episodes? That is crazy. So if this is your first time listening, you picked a pretty significant episode to tune into. I am your host, Mike Morrison. This is the place to be for proven practical tips and advice on starting, running and growing a successful membership business. And I'm so pleased to have you with me for such a huge milestone. 400 episodes, and over nine years of podcasting. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is just weird to say. Almost a decade of the Membership Geeks podcast. Of course, it was the Membership Guys podcast when it very first launched back in 2015. It launched around the June, July of 2015. And the business was called Membership Guys. Our membership was called Member Site Academy. And while it might seem an insignificant change, the fact that it's now Membership Geeks and Membership Academy, they were pretty huge shifts. And yeah, for me, that's kind of got my head buzzing and really baking my noodle right now to think of all the changes that have taken place over the last nine years and just how big a part the podcast has been throughout that. Now, it hasn't been consistent there was a little gap. There was a little break. Uh, was it 2021? It was either 2020 or 2021. Um, we decided to take a little pause on that and it stayed on hiatus for a little while, only returning last September, I believe. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. But hey, 400 episodes, that is one heck of a run. Nine years and you guys still aren't too tired, hopefully, of hearing the sound of my voice. And I'm certainly not tired of dispensing membership insights and advice. But today, I wanted to talk about basically lessons learned in podcasting for doing it for 400 episodes. It has consistently been the most significant part of our marketing strategy since day one. I mean, back in the early days, it was a really big piece of the puzzle in terms of how we were able to build up a brand, how we were able to build up an audience and really get people to have an affinity with our voice or with my voice that I think established the kind of trust that let people know, okay, these are these are people you can learn from. These are people who will steer you in the right direction. You can trust them to give you the right advice. And so that made it easier for people to join the membership. It also helped educate people about a product type, an industry type, a business type that was nowhere near as popular and as widespread and as understood back in 2015 as it is today in 2024. There's obviously still a lot of ins and outs of how to make a membership successful these days, and that's why people like me exist. But back then, it wasn't a mainstream thing. The market for online memberships hadn't really matured too much. And so we kind of had double duty. We had to do a double teach. We had to teach people, first of all, what memberships were, why they were beneficial, why they should start them compared to other types of businesses. And then we had to teach them how to do it the right way. Whereas these days, I think the market has matured and it's changed and it's shifted so much that the bar is raised in terms of information people already have coming in and yeah it's it's just crazy to think an earlier decade of doing this how much has changed since then but all throughout the podcast has been a central part of, of what we do still about 25 to 30 percent of people who join membership academy we ask everyone who joins where did you find out about us it's a mandatory question they have to fill it out and 25 to 30 percent of people say they found out about us through the podcast it is the largest single source of new members to membership academy now it isn't always as direct as someone listens to the podcast and then they come and join the academy we promote it in every single episode it's at the end of the episode but some people will discover 
Membership Geeks, Membership Academy through the show, they'll listen to a few episodes, they'll go and join. That's fantastic. But quite often, it's the entry point. It's the gateway into everything else that we do, into the blog content, into the free Facebook group, onto the email list where we have great freebies and we send out tips. So it's not always a direct A to Z um, path. It's not always linear, but it is where people consistently say, like, 25 to 30% of people say they found out about us first. Uh, and it's opened the doors to a lot of things for us as well. It's raised the profile. It's demonstrated our expertise uh, in a way that I still don't think anyone else in this space has done. Nobody else in this space has the body of work and the body of credibility that we have. If you want to know if if I know my stuff, you want to know if membership geeks can be trusted to dispense valuable advice you've got 400 (laughs) episodes to prove that right um and that was a big part of the the plan you know in the early days kind of back then apple sort of had this promo angle with their app store where they were trying to get more and more people kind of using their app store and stuff like that where you'd have that tagline there's an app for that and so there'd be a scenario or a need or a problem presented. And then the the buzz phrase was, there's an app for that. My plan starting out was to be able to say, there's a podcast for that. There's an episode for that. So I've talked about this before. We had the free Facebook group. We still do. If you go to, membership, uh, if you go to talkmemberships.com or search for Membership Mastermind, in uh, the Facebook app, you'll find the group. There's about 20,000 people in there. It's fantastic. And it is free. But back then we had that group. It was oh, far fewer people in it in those days. And people would post a question. And rather than just type in an answer straight away, if it was a good question that hadn't been addressed by us before, I'd go away, record a quick five to 10 minute podcast episode, go back to the group and reply to them and say, great question. Funnily enough, I've just recorded a podcast episode about that. Here's the link to subscribe. It's going to be released next week. But in the meantime, here's the short version of my answer. So I really used questions from the audience, actual real questions. It wasn't a case of surveying people and asking them what they'd want to know about. We used our Facebook group and we just listened. We listened to the problems that people had and then quickly created podcast episodes to address those now of course that becomes unsustainable after a point the facebook group gets to a certain size um you answer a lot of those kind of first wave of questions but that got us started um and that was really the secret to the podcast building traction that's how we got those first subscribers that then feeds in to how you perform in the podcast charts and getting recommended to people in picking up regular listeners and your downloads going up and all that sort of stuff and obviously then the audience gets bigger the group gets bigger more people come into the membership and so we have a wider source of inspiration for podcast episodes but that's how we got up and running and yeah it spawned 400 episodes and however many more are still to come so i want to share some of the I don't know. I'm not a podcasting episode. I'm not a podcasting episode. I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a podcasting expert, but you know, I've been doing this for nearly a decade. I've run podcasts before that as well. I had a marketing podcast called Marketing Buzz all the way back in the day. I just recently um stumbled across a screenshot of that old website. That was like 2012, 2013. Um before that, there was a podcast that I did with a few other business owners where we talked about kind of business networking and small business issues in the UK. Um and again that was 2010, 2011. So I've been podcasting directly since 2010, 2011, and I was um, in the world of internet radio from 2005. So I've been doing stuff for the best part of, wow, nearly 20 years. That is, how am I at an age where I've been doing anything for 20 years? (laughs) Oh, stop. No existential crisis. Back to podcasting. So yeah, while I definitely don't have all the answers and certainly I'm not the kind of podcasting expert um, that, you know, the likes of Mark Asquith, for example, my good friend from Captivate, who just eats, sleeps and breathes podcasting. I've still got 
some lessons I can share and some observations. So I want to share them today to mark this milestone of the podcast. And hopefully some of it will be of use to you. So I think the most important thing with any podcast is that you need to define its core purpose. Why are you podcasting? Are you podcasting because you just have stuff to say and you feel the world needs to hear it? That's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but you need to make sure that what you're saying is actually aligned with a purpose. Is it driving the business? Is it promoting something? Are you going off message? You know, one of the one of the big struggles for someone like me, because I do have a much broader background and broader skill set than I employ with membership geeks you know um we worked through everywhere from when i was freelancing to when we built up the agency like we worked across e-commerce we worked so many different aspects of digital marketing um i've worked really at the coal face of of helping new businesses to start up that was kind of where i really learned my craft in the business world um and so these are brick and mortar companies so i've got experience with those i've got yeah i've got a lot of stuff i could talk about more broadly about the business world about entrepreneurship and one of the biggest challenges is staying in my lane because we've chosen to be very niche or very niche and staying committed to that is a challenge because there's opinions I have, there's advice I can share that have nothing to do with memberships and that I want to talk about. The kind of conversations I'll have with people when I'm at conferences and we're just talking more generally about business. I have a lot to say on that front. I've got a lot of expertise, a lot of experience I can share, but it doesn't serve my topic. And so staying in my lane and recognizing that it isn't aligned for me to just come on and and talk about everything I might want to talk about, for me to, you know, share a strong opinion I might have about something that is broad but not related to memberships, that's a challenge. And it's something I see people failing at a lot. Um, It's not to cast aspersions towards them, but you do see people lose focus. You see people start to get traction for the thing that they're known for and they start to get people valuing those really specific opinions and so they think that every opinion they have everything they want to talk about will be as valued right oh this person really really loved hearing my advice about memberships so i'm going to share my advice about general e-commerce i'm going to share my advice about the state of um, business funding in the uk like (laughs) It's not to say the opinions don't hold weight. It's not to say they wouldn't be of interest of some people, but you've got to stay true to the core purpose and stay in your lane. And that's a term that's often used disparagingly to discourage people from thinking outside of the very small box that someone else is putting them in. But you also need to look at it from a practical, pragmatic, positive point of view. It's not so much staying in your lane, stay focused. Remember what the core purpose of the podcast is. Remember who your audience are, what brought them to the dance, and make sure that you're serving their interests rather than just indulging yourself because you know you've got a platform. Uh, A lot of people fall on the wrong side of that, personally, I feel, and they lose their way a bit and they, 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 they try and become everything to everyone and they kind of get a little too enamored with their own viewpoint and with spouting it off to people. And yeah, I'm sure we all know people like that. So... Make sure that you're clear on what your purpose of the podcast is. Make sure you're clear on how it works for your business in terms of monetizing it. You don't have to monetize your podcast, but obviously you're listening to this, you run a membership site. If you're running a podcast to drive membership sales, then you're monetizing it, right? Most of you aren't just running hobby-based podcasts. For a lot of people in the podcasting world, the podcast itself is the product. And this is why some of the advice you see out there about how to do things with podcasting what the best practices are they are coming from people where the podcast itself is the product the podcast generates revenue through sponsorships and for membership owners the podcast is usually a promotional vehicle it's not the product itself the podcast promotes the product and so some things are going to be different in terms of episode frequency in terms of the type of subjects you might cover in terms of length even in terms of um, certain little extra touches and stuff like that 
things that might be needed in order to make your podcast attractive to sponsors aren't necessarily going to be the same things as making it effective as a promotional tool for your membership. As an example, you know, a longer podcast episode is probably going to be more attractive to sponsors because there are more opportunities for ad spots. Whereas if you're promoting a product and you are pushing it kind of at the end, then you don't want to have like three hour long podcast episodes because any potential promotion of the product is just going to get lost in that right if you're promoting your single product your singular membership so little things like that um it's an important distinction to keep in mind when taking advice when comparing download numbers and so on because again when people are creating a podcast to be attractive to sponsors usually they're going to go a bit broader usually they're going to be jumping on news so that you know they can ride on the the back of you know, current topics, because they're all about those download numbers. Whereas for us, it's not as big a deal um, because we're not having to show those numbers to anyone to justify them spending money directly on the podcast. It's okay for your podcast to just be a piece of the puzzle. It's okay for your podcast to actually be the thing that leads someone to your lead magnet that then gets them on the email list. It's not the end result. It's not the end product. Make sure you're clear on that. Define that core purpose of the podcast and stay true in it. Um, One thing I would absolutely advise is to invest in audio quality. It is night and day. It makes such a big, big difference. I'm a fan of dynamic microphones. Those are microphones that generally just pick up the sound that's directly in front of them. So you speak into that microphone um, and it doesn't pick up the background noise. The other type of mic or pop i'm not an audio tech there's probably a whole bunch of types of mic but the two types that get talked about the other type is a compressor microphone these are designed to pick up a wider range of sounds so you'll have them in like studios where people are singing playing instruments and stuff like that and you want to you want to pick up the range of sound you want to pick up everything you don't want that for podcasting because that is where you're going to get the background noise and so on so Get a good mic, spend it, spend your money wisely on microphones um, because ultimately that's what you're delivering. You're delivering sound, you're delivering audio and bad audio quality can really put people off listening to your podcast. So generally, um, you know, I'm not someone who will advocate just throwing money at stuff and you don't, it doesn't need to be perfect from day one. But if you're going to invest in anything, get a good mic, make sure you record in the right kind of place, a room that has soft furnishings um, that can absorb some of the reverb um, with carpets, with, you know, you can have a little space in your living room where there's a sofa, where there's curtains, like those kind of things, your environment makes a big, big difference. So make sure you're recording in the right sort of place. I'm a big, big fan of keeping things simple with everything in business. Um, Certainly start simple and then overcomplicate later if you absolutely must. But from being around the online business, the business space for a long, long time, keeping things simple can, can be often the main factor between someone actually getting traction in their business or in, you know, a project like podcasting versus someone just shooting themselves in the foot from the get-go because the more complicated you make it to start out with the more difficult it is to be adaptable to um, change when you start getting feedback or insight into you know how your listeners feel about your show like the more bells and whistles the more complication the more unnecessary faff you add into things the harder things are going to be just do the basics, keep things simple, and it'll be more manageable and more sustainable for the long term. So don't go overboard with your intro jingle. Like, make it short. It's good to have a little audio intro. Make it short and then just jump right into things. Don't make people sit through a five-minute waffle before you actually get to any substance. Don't overcomplicate the theme of your show and the format of your show. Um, don't get screwy with your release schedule Um, keep that consistent you know one episode a week one episode a fortnight whatever's going to work for you keep it consistent Um, don't be you know 
some weeks for special themes we release a daily episode and then we go to weekly and then we got bon- like keep things simple as possible um give yourself flexibility like just keep things as simple as you can I was guilty of overcomplicating things a few years ago um, when we decided that um, the co-founder, Callie Willows, was going to start joining me on the podcast regularly. We'd done a few episodes in the past where she'd kind of been a guest, but from the very start, the podcast was always just me. That was because I had experience with podcasting. Callie wasn't comfortable um, doing podcasting, and so we kind of divided up our responsibilities she would write blog posts i would record the podcast and that's why it was a one person show but we had her on the show a few times reception was always good and when we rebranded as membership geeks we really wanted to put both of us as a two-person brand out there more so we brought her onto the show and we overcomplicated things we made it so i think it was like one episode a month was going to be Callie on her own interviewing a membership owner about their membership so we used to have a a, a separate podcast called behind the membership where she would do that we decided we'll do that as part of the main so we did one of those a month one would be an expert interview um, where I would interview a guest expert or it would be a two-person episode where me and Callie would talk about a topic and then in the in-between, there'd be solo episodes from me, so short solo episodes. Already, I'm I'm recounting this and thinking, oh, my word, like, no wonder that didn't work. We really overcomplicated things. We turned it into a slog. We made it harder for us to coordinate, to batch produce. Um, it was just, it, it sucked. <laughs> and I don't think it was very good for the listener because we moved away from the really straightforward approach that we'd always had towards something that was just overdone. And so you didn't really know what you were getting from the show when you tuned in. Don't make that mistake. Don't overcomplicate things. Make sure you give yourself flexibility too. Um, so again, when we made this change, we started doing cold opens. So that's where when the when the episode starts playing rather than hearing a jingle you get audio from me saying um you know after you've done 400 podcast episodes what lessons are there to share that's what i'm talking about in today's 400th episode of the membership geeks podcast let's dive in and then you'd hear a jingle and then i'd come back and be talking now cold opens a lot of podcasts do those tv shows do those as well um but what that does is it makes it so that you're kind of painted into the corner a little bit especially if you're mentioning episode numbers so we'd have some things where something would come up that meant we had to squeeze a new episode idea into the release schedule and that messed with the episode numbers of every episode that came after so for example you know we'd maybe have episodes 200 to 205 recorded and then something would come up that we had to jump on or there'd be a milestone or there'd be an anniversary or something like that and then suddenly we need to switch up what episode 200 is going to be and so all the other episodes you know 200 becomes 201 201 becomes 202 and that was a nightmare because we'd recorded these cold opens that meant for a start there was more editing to do for our podcast editor but also the amount of times we had to re-record those opens and just redo it but this time say episode 201 instead of episode 200 so yeah giving yourself that flexibility not painting yourself in a corner these days with the exception of this episode because it's obviously a milestone episode i don't mention the episode number at all at all it's not important information like it's important for me because obviously i'm keeping track of episodes but your podcast that will actually tell you the episode number it's not relevant to the content and so now if i need to shift stuff around a bit i'm not hemmed in by that also when we're talking about simplicity remember you're not joe rogan you don't need a fancy studio you don't need to record your podcast for youtube that's another thing as well the word podcast is getting conflated you know people are creating youtube chat shows and calling them podcasts they're not podcasts are predominantly audio now 
people will argue that with me i'm certain um and maybe i'm just too long in the tooth but you don't need to do a joe rogan experience you don't need to create a youtube show in order for it to be a podcast keep it simple one person one mic let's go add complexity later if you absolutely must i mentioned batching before that's another big tip i would share batch producing your episodes is a game changer don't record week to week try to batch two to three months in advance so batch you know eight to twelve podcast episodes in the space of a couple of days or in the space of a week this makes it easier to plan ahead because you know you're not having to fit it in on a week-to-week basis you're not having the issue where one week you get sick or you're busy or you've got to go away you've got to mess around with that now once a quarter record when you're in the zone take two or three days out i mean there's been times in the past where i went into a podcasting studio and did two days and just hammered through episodes and that was several months worth of content it allows for busy weeks it allows for things to go wrong it means you're not constantly on the treadmill every week week after week grinding out new episodes and it's just so much easier schedule them all in advance and yeah it kind of gets them done it's out of the way and it just becomes more manageable that really is a game changer it's been a big big part of how this show has been sustainable for as long as it has something else i'd also encourage you um don't forget about your archive you know a lot of people will put a podcast episode out and then it's out it's done there's a bit of hype there's a bit of chat around it for a week or two and then that's it it's in the rear view mirror but if you've got a topic like ours which is evergreen you know a lot of the episodes that i put out in the very first year of this show while they don't sound as great now um the the value the content the substance the material is still valuable today and so it's remembering that as you amass a body of work as you build up that archive there is still a lot of value in your past episodes so find ways to tap into that now a lot of people will binge this podcast they'll discover the show and they'll just listen to it at length episode after episode after episode but that's becoming harder to do now um fewer people say that they listen to the whole archive we used to get people even at like 200 250 episodes we get people saying hey i discovered membership geeks a few weeks ago i have binged every single episode that you've ever put out and now i am a membership machine fantastic but the bigger the archive gets the less likely it is someone's going to binge listen to 400 episodes nine years of podcasts if you do man kudos to you that is a lot of me (laughs) but yeah it's becoming less and less and if people do binge they're more likely to actually listen to the last couple of years worth which is great but that does mean you've got to find ways of drilling into your deeper archive and extracting the value so um something that we do is twice a year we have a little run of what i call from the vault episodes not actually done that in a while i'm going to have some coming up um later on in this year and that is where for three episodes in a row instead of it being a brand new episode i dig in and i hand pick specific past episodes to bring back up in the list to refresh people's attention with so i'll record usually a new intro a new outro where i can add in any additional thoughts i can talk about if my opinions changed i can highlight bits of that bits of the original episode that have become more prominent that aren't as relevant um but the actual the core of it is the past episode i'm not re-recording them i do that from time to time um i revisit topics from time to time try and put a new spin on them but the from the vault episodes the actual meat of it the substance of it comes from the original episode but i just refresh it i just bring it back to people's attention i have the new intro and outro so that the branding's consistent again it's refreshed and i have the opportunity to drop in additional thoughts and this just as popular as any other episodes and actually it means that people are getting curated highlights basically from the vault because 
I don't expect someone to listen to episodes from 2017, 2018, 2019. Like, that's a long time ago, but there's a lot of value still there. There's some subjects that I'm probably never going to cover again because I've got such a great episode in the past. So it's a really good way of tapping into your archive and ensuring that um, it's it's working for you and you are getting your best content in front of your audience. Something else that I do to try and direct people more on the show to past episodes um, is every every Christmas, so it's usually the closest podcast episode to Christmas, I will do a top 10. So I do, you know, the 10 most popular episodes of the past year. And it's kind of, it's a little bit of a fun way of me Again, giving people a curated list of stuff they might have missed out on in the last year. I do it as a whole countdown, and for every episode, I will pick out a little soundbite, a little snippet, a little bit of value. And again, it's just a good way of kind of doing a yearly highlight show, right? Um, find ways as well to reference past episodes. Like when you're planning for a new one, if you know that there's something you go into more in the past. Include that in your notes. Make a note of the episode number, the URL you can direct people to. Just make sure you don't forget that archive and that you are bringing older episodes to people's attention. Repurposing as well. That is something I'd encourage you to do. So again, don't just look at your podcast as the be all and end all. Look for ways where you can take little clips from it and maybe put them out on social media. Look for ways that you can... Um, take quotes and have images of those quotes created and put in your blog post or again out on social look at whether you can turn your podcast episode into a blog article repurposing is great if you want to know more about repurposing my good friend amy woods runs a repurposing agency called content 10x that's content 10x.com the 10 is a number content 10x Dot com. Lots of great stuff on repurposing. She's been on the show as well. But I would advise you, remember the core purpose of your podcast. It still needs to be a podcast first. We used to work with Content 10X for repurposing the Membership Geeks podcast. This was before we hired um, our copywriter and that obviously changed things a lot and before we hired our graphic designer so we hired people where we could actually do these kind of things in-house but the experience and i think the mistake that we started making with repurposing is we forgot the core purpose so repurpose with a core purpose (laughs) um what i mean by that is what i started doing is i started ending up choosing topics for the podcast based on whether I thought they would be suitable for turning into multiple other things. So some of the best episodes of this podcast are five minutes, ten minutes long, where it's really concise, it's really specific, just dives in, gives you exactly what you need to know about this real specific thing, and then we're done. They're some of the best episodes of the show. However, it's hard to turn a five-minute podcast into a thousand-word blog article. And so when we were really trying to put repurposing at the center of our content strategy, if I'd sit down and plan our topics, I'd set aside, I'd cast aside those subjects where I could only do a five or 10 minute podcast episode. And you'll, I mean, you won't notice because obviously no one pays as much attention to the intricacies of these kind of things as as you do yourself as the content creator. But there was that period where the podcast episode length started averaging out at 25 to 30 minutes long. Whereas before, I would say it probably was averaging out at 10 to 15. And the reason was I was choosing topics that I thought would be broad enough, substantial enough, that they would then make for good blog articles and that they would give opportunities for creating video content or graphic content. And that's not necessarily a terrible thing, but that for us was really losing sight of the the core purpose of the show. And that's why I ended up stopping doing it for a while. Because now, instead of that real simple thing I talked about in the early days, where you'd see a question, you'd get an idea, hit record, one man, one mic, let's go. And you'd record five to 10 minutes, great, gold. Instead of that, it was now this behemoth where 
you were having to really, really carefully plan out the topics. I was having to script the episodes a lot more intricately and they were longer. They were either broader or just kept going um, instead of just being really, really, you know, a perfect little gold nugget. And it stopped working. I stopped enjoying it. I stopped feeling as good about the output and the process became huge. So I'd record an episode, then it would go to our content manager who would send it off to Content 10X, who would create a great blog article. They'd create a bunch of different assets. It would then come back. We'd get bounced off to a designer. It would need to go through approval, refinement. We'd create all these different... And man, it just became so convoluted. And the quality went down, not because we were repurposing, but because we forgot the core purpose. And we weren't staying true to the function of the podcast, which was to give like proven practical tips and advice every single week. We weren't choosing topics based on whether we thought this was something the audience really would benefit from. We were choosing them based on whether we thought it would make for a good blog article and that was really doing things the wrong way around that was prioritizing the wrong things and that led to a lot of burnout and a lot of time being spent on just creating the content and not actually using it strategically so definitely repurpose look for opportunities where you can spin off your podcast content into other things where you can squeeze every ounce out of that podcast content but never forget the core purpose of what your podcast is for, what it should be all about. Another lesson, another tip, your podcast host is important. It is, don't go cheap on that. Don't go for free podcast hosts. If something's free, then you are the product. Um, Go with reliable, go with forward thinking, go with um, trusted. We started with Libsyn back in the days. Libsyn had been around for a long time. They were a decent enough host, but they were also really outdated and really clunky. Um, Their interface was frustrating to use. It was a bit buggy um, and they weren't really doing anything. There were things like in terms of future development, there were things that I was finding myself itching to be able to do. Even just basic things like embedding a podcast player on your website. Their podcast player was so old. It was just wasn't great it was inflexible it didn't look modern there weren't many options around it they may have changed i think they upgraded a little bit but even the upgrade still felt like it was five years behind um so they were good they were solid they're still good they're a big company now but yeah the actual product itself was lacking for me meanwhile my very good friends at captivate.fm were just tearing up the podcast hosting industry um and they were thinking about growth tools they were adding in features that i was looking at and thinking man i wish i could do that on my show and so i went through the process of migrating to captivate um they were a big big help with that and seriously the tools that they gave make life so much easier and uh, there's so many marketing tools available uh distributing your podcast is so much easier than it was on on libsyn uh, they've got things like dynamic ad insertion i love dynamic ad insertion basically means you can kind of like switch out the ads at the end of your podcast you can kind of paste in uh, an ad at a certain point in your show and so that might not sound like anything but it's really impressive kind of tech like if i want to change the intro that appears on all of my podcast episodes i can do it in one fell swoop like and it'll roll out to my whole archive even the ones back in 2015 if i want to tag an ad for a webinar i'm doing this month then i don't need to go back and re-record episodes i can just dynamically switch out the little promo that you'll hear at the end of this show swap it out for a one that's about a webinar that i'm doing this month then when the webinar happens i can just switch it back and it'll be as though i recorded it that way from the start it's really cool and it's getting better um and just having these kind of tools at your disposal just makes it so much more powerful to actually do more with your podcast so yeah your podcast source is really important i can't sing the praises of captivate enough like they are really leading the charge 
in so many ways um and that's because you know the people involved in it are fantastic on the tech side they know the podcasting world inside out but also they actually know business and marketing uh they're not just a software company and you can tell by how they structure things this sounds like it's an ad for captivate it's not (laughs) um I, i use them i couldn't be happier in using them and i recommend them to everyone a lot of our members and community use them too your podcast host is really important don't scrimp on it same as your audio quality you want a good host you want a host that's reliable you want a host that gives you the tools to actually do more with your podcast from a business and marketing point of view so yeah make sure you're using a good host don't go for free another thing i would say i really love solo episodes you know a lot of podcasts are interview based i love solo episodes they're easier to make there's a lot less hassle i like being able to just talk about one specific question or share one specific opinion or viewpoint per episode i find that they're better for search they're better for linking the specificity makes it more likely that you'll have a reason to recommend someone listen um and for memberships in particular again it's a great way to build credibility to build that body of work that helps people create that affinity with you to know that they can trust you as a teacher, as a community leader, as an influencer. I love solo episodes. Um, Yeah, interview episodes, we do have some, but this is definitely not an interview show. I'd probably like to do some more going forward, but it's never going to be the centerpiece of what the show's about. I like the solo episodes, and the download numbers are consistent with the interview ones that we do. So, yeah evidently you like them too um while we have had some interviews on the show i will definitely say chasing big name interviews um isn't something you should get distracted doing interviewing big name guests this isn't the holy grail a lot of people who have interview shows they want to get the biggest hitters they want to get the big names they want to get people with huge audiences a handful of those are really good for credibility and for search but a big part of the reason people want to have the big names there's two reasons one because usually the big names are the people that they look up to themselves and so there's that almost that kind of fanboy fangirl kind of element there you know you want to talk to your idols you want to pick their brains that's great but also a big part of the reason is thinking that well they've got a huge audience so if i've got the huge name in the industry they've got the huge audience i'm going to get some of that huge audience truth is the big name guests will not promote your interview they do so many of these they consider and actually rightfully so them doing the interview is their give that is the thing they're doing for you they won't then usually go off and give even more by emailing their list about the interview by sharing it on social they've done their thing big name guests will very rarely promote your interview um small influencers with passionate fans are often a lot more interesting often they're a lot more on the ball with their topic because they're in the trenches they're grinding it out they're staying on it they've got fresh points of view and they're far more likely to promote so if you're chasing interviews yes a couple of big name ones are good for getting you through the door with certain guests for giving you credibility for bringing in a little bit of search traffic but usually the smaller influencers who have their own little pockets of rabid fans who are more on it they're going to be better just in terms of the quality of the episode in terms of the knowledge they bring to the table in terms of the effort they put in but also they will be more likely to promote you the other tip that i would give is don't be afraid to take a break i've told you before about how we hit a wall in 2021 the reason being things have become so convoluted the process of putting out the podcast spinning it into a dozen other pieces of content was just it for a while honestly membership geeks became a content mill it became a content production business and churning out the podcast grinding out the podcast was taking priority over serving our members over building our audience over building our brand in other ways so many things fell by the wayside because the entire team was caught up in the process of producing a podcast and as we said at the beginning the podcast isn't the product the podcast is the thing that promotes the product so it shouldn't be 
the entirety of what you do. And especially with podcasting, again, when you have that simplicity of one man, one mic, let's go. One woman, one man, let's go. One person, one man. One woman, one man, let's go. That's a different show. <laughs> one person, one mic, let's go. Like, it should be simple. It should be easier. One of the reasons I love podcasting is because it's so accessible. It's such a straightforward way of really getting your voice out there without it needing a whole production behind it. And yet, that's what I created and that's why I hit the wall in 2021. I was burning out on topics. I didn't feel like I had anything to say because the episodes we've been putting out, we were just throwing so much into them because they needed to be blog posts. They needed to be repurposable. And I'd fallen out of love with it because I wasn't I wasn't doing it for the right reasons. So that combined with the overcomplication of, you know, trying to do the whole thing of Callie would be on some episodes, some would be podcasts, some would be just me. It just really made my passion for grind to a halt. So I knew I needed to step away and take a bit of a break. So the show went on hiatus and it stayed on hiatus until last year, 2023. Uh, Longer than I thought it had been. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the last episode was like September, October, 2021. Um, Uh, yeah and it just stayed away for a bit and I agree with myself that I would only come back if I could come up with six months worth of topics I felt excited to talk about like I didn't think about the show at all for a year I didn't I wasn't sitting here thinking okay it's just a matter of time I put it out my mind focused on other things obviously the pandemic had been happening um and so there were other priorities in the business but I just totally put it out of my mind I wasn't sitting there thinking every week, when's it going to come back? When's it going to come back? I put it away and I didn't really start getting the itch until kind of summer 2023. And yeah, I agree with myself. If I had come up with six months worth of topics that I felt excited to talk about, then I'd explore it further. And I ended up coming up with like 18 months worth of topics that were either fresh or that I was excited to revisit or hadn't been covered before and I thought were important or stuff that had changed. So yeah, that was the biggest signal to me. Um, I made little deals with myself in terms of the simplicity. So the release schedule is less frequent. It's every two weeks now. And the episodes, I rarely, if ever, say the episode number in the, in the episode itself so that I have flexibility to move things around. I don't commit to certain dates. Um, you know, I, I will rarely say next week, we're going to talk about X, Y, Z. I am giving myself so much breathing room. And honestly, going forward, I may shake that up a little bit. I may go back to weekly episodes. I may bring interviews in, but this is what enabled me to come back. But the fact that I took a break in the first place, don't be afraid to do that. If you feel yourself burning out, if you feel yourself running out of ideas, running out of steam, let yourself take a hiatus pretty much every long running podcast I can think of in the business world, especially has taken a break at some point. Sometimes you just need to shake off the cobwebs. Sometimes you need to take a step back to take two steps forward. So yeah, that would be my other lesson, my other tip, my other piece of advice. Now, hopefully from a few of the things I've mentioned, you can see that even with 400 episodes behind me, I have still not got everything perfect. There have been missteps, there have been mistakes, and there have been some oversights and untapped opportunities. Still to this day, nearly a decade of this podcast, there's still stuff I'm not tapped into. I really should do more to promote individual episodes. I definitely fall into the bad habit of thinking that, okay, when an episode's done, it's recorded, it's scheduled, it goes out, it's promoted, that's it, it's done. I could be doing so much more to promote each individual episode. Um, Yeah, the repurposing that I was doing was great, but was not the right direction to go in. And maybe I've overcorrected that a little bit. Maybe I've kind of gone to a point where I'm not doing enough. But even before that, I still don't think we were promoting each individual episode more. I could be doing so much more to build anticipation for a new episode, so much more to promote it, like, in the days after it's released too often an episode goes out it gets plugged on social media that day and that's it 
I could definitely be doing more more individual episodes, treating every podcast episode as, you know, a, a significant content release, right? Um, also should be definitely looking more into doing member only podcasts. Um, we've had Academy members asking for a podcast that is private to Academy members for a while. That is something I'm contemplating right now. That's something I might be announcing something about in the coming weeks. Um, we've had Mark Asquith from Captivate on the show to discuss this a while back. Some of this has been the technology. It's not always been easy to do this. And even today, it's not the easiest thing in the world to automate a private podcast. Um, because obviously you can't just have a private podcast in Apple, like on the Apple podcast app, because it's private. You don't want everyone to be able to listen to a member only podcast. You need to think about removing access to that show when someone leaves the membership. And there's ways that can do it that aren't ideal. And there's ways you can do it that kind of are ideal, but are a little more manual. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards um captivate do have the functionality for that so yeah um it's something i'm contemplating um there's going to be some new stuff happening in the academy soon that has me thinking that actually this could be a good time to introduce a member podcast for members of membership academy so yeah that's definitely a untapped up till now opportunity um i am as i mentioned before i'm toying with moving back to an episode a week fortnightly starting to feel like it lacks any sort of urgency to it so we'll see whether that is a change that i make um because obviously doing that doubles the workload and doubles how much you've got to do for the podcast so we'll we'll consider that um i also want to do a lot more to curate the episodes um to create playlists that are themed you know 400 episodes there's a lot i talked before about the importance of using your archive so i can be doing really curated playlists almost mini audio courses that are comprised of podcast episodes i'd like to do that a bit more a simpler option also is just to write more blog posts that round up episodes around a specific topic too so that's something i definitely want to do more of i'd also like to find a way of bringing behind the membership back into things again that was a separate show for like five seasons where it would be Callie Willows, um, the former founder and um, former partner within this company. She did that show on her own and it would be, it was seasonal. It would usually be one season a year and it would just be 10 episodes of her interviewing membership owners. And it was great. It was very popular. It spawned a book and everything like that. We did merge it into the main show, as I mentioned before. Um, I'm not convinced that totally worked. But yeah, I'd like to find a way of bringing it back into things. Maybe it needs to be a different thing. Maybe it's not a podcast. Maybe we change it. Maybe it's a standalone thing. Maybe we still do it as a seasonal thing, but perhaps have Hannah my community manager at Membership Academy, perhaps she can do the interviews. She might be listening to this thinking, oh, please, Lord, don't make me. Um, yeah, <laughs> nice thing for me to throw out on the podcast when I've not even mentioned or discussed it with her. But yeah, it's something I definitely want to explore because it was a valuable concept. It was a popular one. Um, it'll be weird doing it without Callie. Um, those of you who listen to the show may already know if you're a member Callie departed the company um earlier this year for health reasons it'll be strange doing it without her because that was always her thing I wasn't involved in any way shape or form um but it is a valuable thing to do so I do want to explore ways of keeping it going and there we have it yeah that's going to be a wrap that's uh, a lot of talk but you know a lot of lessons from 400 episodes and perhaps the biggest episode there is you're never done evolving you're never done learning changing looking for ways to improve looking for ways to tap into new opportunities to make the most of existing ones um you're never going to get it perfect never rest on your laurels never take it for granted anything that you do with your podcast you'll still be making mistakes and missing the mark even after nine years that never stops so don't beat yourself up for it because it makes you better. It's all part of the process. Uh, I just want to say a big, big thank you to each and every one of you for every second of your attention you've given me. Um, genuinely, <laughs> it's easy to say this as just kind of, it feels like it's something you need to say, but absolutely sincerely from the 
furthest, deepest recesses at the bottom of my heart, I want to thank every single one of you. Like, I love doing this show. I love the fact that you you hear me, the fact you listen to me, that I can reach you in this way. Um, all the feedback that I've had over the years, whether it's in person, in email, whether it's messages on social about how this show has helped you and how you found us through the show and you binge listen or it genuinely means so so much really really does um it's still crazy to me that i can just sit here and talk and you people like it and appreciate it and get value from it and subscribe and voluntarily uh, listen to me for 400 episodes over nine years it genuinely means so so much i hope you'll continue to listen to me for as long as i've got something to say um but i do i really do appreciate each and every one of you whether you just subscribe to the show today or whether you've been with me from that very first episode in 2015 thank you so much it means a lot thank you for helping me to get to 400 episodes and here's to the next 400 <laughs> yeah that'll be a lot that yeah you're definitely not binge watch binge listening to 800 episodes but hey Lots of exciting things coming up, both for the podcast and for Membership Geeks and Membership Academy, and hopefully for you and your own membership business too. That is it from me for episode 400 of the Membership Geeks podcast. As ever, I love and appreciate each and every single one of you for every second of attention you give. If you are a long-term listener, yeah, you know that that appreciation is there. If you've got a moment or two to leave a nice, shiny five-star review for the show, I can't think of any better time to do it than on this, the 400th episode. Uh, if you do, hit me up on social media. Let me know you have so I can thank you personally. I do read every single review you send in, and I appreciate it. They mean so much. Not only hearing about how we're helping you, but also because every review helps us to reach more people and make more of a difference in this wonderful world of memberships. And if you're new to the show, this is one heck of an episode to start with. I don't usually talk this long, I promise, but hopefully you found it useful, useful enough to hit that subscribe button on your podcast app and ensure that you do not miss a single installment of the Membership Geeks podcast going forward that is it from me thanks again for helping me get to 400 episodes and i'll be back again with you very soon with another episode of the membership geeks podcast bye for now if you enjoyed this week's episode of the membership geeks podcast we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com membership academy is the original membership about memberships and it's the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting growing and running a successful online membership business whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be and you need some help making it a reality or whether your website is already up and running and you're looking for ways to grow and attract new members then Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. Not only do you get access to our step-by-step -step membership roadmap, our extensive training library, and exclusive member-only discount and tools, you'll also become part of our supportive, active community of membership owners that will help you along the way in your journey with feedback, encouragement, and advice. All of this and more make Membership Academy the number one place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership business. Check it out and join the community at membershipacademy.com.